All righty. Well, we have started the recording. Yes, yes, we are on. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Bright and early. You made it here on time. Good job. So you're here on time, so give yourself an extra, what is it, 300 points or something. You are here on time. And um, if you're not in Colorado and watching online, then you can give yourself 300 points for watching live. But um, first of all, good morning. Um, first of all, how was this last week for you? I went, we're going to do a little check-in. Um, should we kind of go over here? To breathe for a second, you're all here. You're awake. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Uh huh. You're awake. You're great, right? You're great. You're great. You're great. Absolutely. So I want you to think really quickly. Do a little self reflection about this last week, okay? So because this whole process of this face center thing is, I want you growing. You're going to be growing in the process of becoming a stronger leader and just developing as a person. And I think if you had a great week, awesome. If you had not so great week, what can you learn from it? Okay, use it as a learning opportunity. The key to this is to not beat yourself up. Remember like we talked about last week, you will be so much further along in your business if you don't beat yourself up, okay? So take a second, grab a piece of paper because we're gonna talk about a lot of different stuff and I want you to ask yourself some questions. Um, how did you stretch yourself this last week? Did you stretch yourself is the first question. Or, um, or did you run from everything and you got all those messages that I sent with challenges and did you try to do them? Did you not? Did you say, I'm not even going to do it? Or did you actually try? So did you stretch yourself? First of all, what did, what did you learn about yourself this last week? These are questions just that you've got to ask yourself as you're growing. Um, what fears came up? What um, limiting beliefs came up this last week? Write, write them down. What were the big limiting beliefs that, that came up that, that, this last week? You know, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I'm no good at this. You know, things we talked about last week. What are the limiting beliefs and the, and the fears um, that came up? And what can you do to work on those and grow on those or, or, and, and, um, and move past those quicker when they come? Okay. So when those limiting beliefs came, what did you do about it? Okay. So was it good? Was it not so good? Um, so the, those are just some questions I, I want you to ask yourself. The other thing I want you to ask yourself is, um, we're doing a little self-reflection. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, ladies. Because the whole point of this is that you're growing. Um, the other thing is last week I talked about a ton of ways to meet people. I talked about a ton of ways to meet people. I talked about changing your attitude. The question is, did you start implementing any of those? Did you implement some of them? Some of you I know did. Caitlin, I know you went out yesterday and got how many names yesterday? Uh, between facial boxes and um, women, I got 21. Yeah, 21 names in a day. I went to Castle Rock and went and met some people. So she went out and implemented those things. And I'm not, I, we're not here to beat, beat anybody up, but did you implement those things? Because a lot of time, a lot of consultants that I talk to, they didn't. <laughs> and, and it's because you're afraid. Bottom line is I know it's because you're afraid. I know it's because it's more scary. It's really easy to do facial boxes. And you guys, I didn't talk about facial boxes last week. And facial boxes is chicken way to meet people. Just FYI. Chicken way to meet people. I love you guys, but if you want to meet great people, and, and we were just talking about this, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but like posting in Facebook forums and people that you don't know is a chicken way to meet people. So, yeah, I, hopefully it turns out great. I'm not saying that, but you're going to get the best results. Okay. Because here's what I know about posting in Facebook groups. You get some crazy people sometimes. <laughs> I'm just warning you. I have had some, the craziest people happen from facial boxes and Facebook forums. Okay. I, I'm, I'm trying, I want you to be smart about your time because yes, it may be easy to do those things, but you want to build longevity. And you're, I think it'd be more frustrated in the long run that you've got to eventually face your fears and ask people face-to-face, -face, okay? So I'd encourage you to go back and implement some of those things if you did not already implement the things from last week, okay? Because the, the, the key to this process, good morning, love, the key to this process is that you're getting into action, okay? Because you're not here, I, I would hope and pray that you're not here just because you wanna, um, you know, get up early on a Saturday morning, okay? Because <laughs> I know that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I want to be able to, <laughs> y'all know me, I am not a morning person, and it was very hard for me to get out of bed this morning. But 
I also know that I want to help you guys build strong, solid businesses. And I can talk at you all day long, but you got to implement this stuff. Okay. So I really want to challenge you to implement these things that we're learning. Okay. You're going to be afraid. You're going to be nervous, but the fear isn't going to go away. You've got to get into action now. You're going to be most brave right now. Okay. Got that. Okay. So that there's our little lesson. And, um, and then we'll move on to our training and then, Oh, thank you. And yes, be sure to turn all the points in those of you that are watching online. Be sure to turn your points in. So not, uh, but I, I want you to know that. Remember, Remember, all you got to do to graduate from pay centers is to show up and to turn your points in. And I will be um, later tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to send out an email with the points and we're going to know where everyone's at. If you don't send me your points, I put a zero. Okay. So it's better to send me five points than a zero. Okay. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be accountable because accountability is huge. Okay. And we're not doing that to compare. Let me be clear, but we're doing it to have accountability. Okay. Because you'll let yourself off the hook all day long, but if other people are watching you, it's that extra push. Does that make sense? So don't run from that. Embrace that. Some of you are competitive. That excites you. Some of you that shuts you down. I want you just turning it in. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Oh, one. I felt like there was somebody else was going to say. I love you. I do love you guys. And I'm proud of you for showing up and sticking with it. Second weekend. You're here. You didn't drop out. Good job. Remember? <laughs> Seriously, that's huge. Like we talked about last week is that you stick with something. That it is going to be a huge growth process for a lot of you who have that limiting belief of I never finish anything I start. And a lot of you have had that belief that I'd encourage you. This is a place for you to break that. Okay. All right. Excited. Okay. So last week we talked about leads and whether you implement it or not, are you blind? Are you blind? Okay. Yeah. Um, can someone help us shut that blind over there? So she didn't go blind over here. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So last week we talked about leads and whether you implemented them or not, I would go back and, and watch them that the next key, once you have leads is you have to call them. I can't tell you how many people, consultants I've talked to, they've done the hard part of getting leads and then they've never called them. And I want to shake their little heads and be like, ah, you did the hard part of getting leads. Why did you not call them? Right? Um, <laughs> right. I'm not going to make anyone feel guilty. <laughs> but you're normal because I, I've had a lot of people that, that have done that. But the bottom line is you're afraid. All of this boils down to fear. And it all boils down to um, just not, you know, not having that, that sense of urgency, which we'll talk about in a minute. But, um, okay, or not having some system. The other thing, okay, well, we'll go over that later. Okay, after you get your leads, have some system that you can have them in a nice place all together. Because sometimes people's <laughs> leads will be all over the place. They'll have this, uh, like, <laughs> this in their kitchen and this in their car and this in their purse and this, you know, the little lead entry form. Have your leads. I should have brought my, um, I have my lead book in my car because I have it with me and I literally just staple, I staple my, like I have a notebook, let me grab this real quick. I have like a notebook That's like this I mean. and I just staple, like I'll take a piece of paper and I'll staple the, the leads to, to the page and then I write any notes next to them. And so like, yeah, if this was a little entry form, I would staple it here and I would write, okay, I called her at this day, this day, this day. And it's all in my little notebook. Does that make sense? And so I staple the papers actually here. That that's what I do. It's, so it's this whole big fat notebook of just yes. all my leads. And see, they're not just random slips of paper. Because if y'all do this, then you're gonna lose them, and then you're not a lot less likely yes. to call them. I know she, she well. Um, <laughs> I thought that was your purse. It's a cute little bag. So find find some system. Everybody works system differently, but you gotta find some system that you have all your leads together. Uh, no, no, it's fine. I'm just saying, you got to do what works for you. I like that I can flip through and I can see it all visually. I have it on my car. I can show you guys later, but it's a very simple system. I'm all about simple, simple, simple. Okay. So you have your leads. Now we have to call them. Very important, very important part of this process. Now I emailed you some, some, some different scripts and we'll go over them in a minute. But before we go through that, um, I want to go over a couple of things because just like we talked about last week, booking is all right here too. Booking is all right here. Just like meeting people is all right here. Just like this whole business is right between your whole ear, right between your ears that I, I want you to write this down because I'm going to make you say this before, um, before we, we actually do the booking. Um, I want you to create a powerful booking affirmation. So something that gets you excited. For example, I'm a booking fool. Everyone I talk to says yes. 
everyone wants to book with me because I'm the best consultant in town. Because uh, I'm fun. I'm a booking fool. I'm great at booking. I love booking. I love making booking calls. It's my favorite part about the business. Whatever. Like, I'm just rambling off some stuff, but you get the point. Does that make sense? You guys can't say it without laughing because <laughs> now these are things you would say to yourself. I'm going to make you say it out loud before we do the calls in a minute. But, but the key is to go in. To booking and being on the phone with excitement and confidence knowing that you have something great to offer one of the problems I see with consultants is and they do this at every part of the, the business is they feel like they're bothering people so if you get on the phone with this attitude of I don't want to bother her I don't want to bug her I don't want to be that Mary Kay lady and you go into it with that attitude you're not gonna get a booking if you guys have done it before, right? I know y'all have done it before. But if you go into that calls being like, I'm a booking fool. I have the best opportunity out there. Who would not want to book with me because I'm so much fun and I have an amazing product to offer. You go into it with that attitude and that confidence is going to come across in everything you say. Does that make sense? So that's huge. So booking starts here. A couple things before we get into booking. I want you to write these down because they're, they're the booking do's and don'ts. Okay, so once you... I've got your leads. Um, well, for, first of all, there, 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 there's a couple different things I want to go for. But with booking, you've got to have lots of avenues of leads to work with. You've got to have lots of avenues of leads to work with. I would say that's probably one of the number one problem. One of the biggest problems is I see consultants have like five or ten names and they'll call the same ones over and over and over again and be like, why are they not responding? I'm not even that good. Out of five to ten names, you may get one person to actually book with you. That's just the name of the game once you say that I don't know like around that that yeah. it's not you you just don't have enough names of people to tap into okay that I can't remember if I said this last week but it, it's really important that you have at least five different sources of leads coming in at all times so last week I talked about lots of different ways to meet people right now you want to be getting your five different sources of leads coming in because Okay, so I totally threw facial boxes and, um, and um, um, Facebook posting, whatever, in forums um, under the bus, which that, that's one way, okay? But you want to have lots of other ways, too. If you want to use that, great, but don't hold your breath on that, okay? Have other ways where you're honoring working women, where you are doing restaurants, where you're doing foods, where you're doing, um, you know, some, per some customer appreciation promotion with a nail salon, a tanning salon, a gym. You guys can get into any small businesses. The key is you've got to just ask. Um, but then, of course, you can warm chatter. Of course, referrals. Of course, booking parties from parties. But do you have five sources of leads going on right now? So write that down. Do I have five sources of leads? So would anyone in the room say they have five sources of leads at this point? Yes, Besides Brianna. She's a director. That's why. Um, well, because she's... she's <laughs> Uh, that's it. Thanks. She's not, she doesn't have five sources. Okay. Um, she is a director because she has five sources of leads. Does that make sense? That if you want to move up in your business, you need to have five sources of leads coming in at all times because I, then you have different avenues. If, and they have to, you have to be, um, hey guys, you have to be focusing on changing those because there's going to be certain ones like there's times where I'm like, oh, wait, I only have four sources of leads coming in because this one's not working anymore. And so whatever it is, you have to, you have to be constantly evaluating them because people are changing and things are changing. Like when I started my business four years ago, Facebook would not have been a backup way to get leads. Mm -hmm. That would have been a great way four years ago. But now everybody's on Facebook and all the crazies are too. So it's not a great way anymore, mm -hmm. but it is something to have out there as like, you know, your fifth source or maybe your sixth or seventh. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and then doing different types of warm chatting is also great because you can get makeup people with, you know, you see somebody who's got great makeup on and you're like, oh my gosh, I just love your eyeshadow. And you can get her to model in your portfolio, whereas someone over here who looks really put together but she's not wearing any makeup, or maybe that other mom that you see at the soccer game but she's never wearing makeup, she might be somebody who would be interested in something like a mask which is different. So those are different sources of leads because they're different types of people in different pockets. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's Tangent. good. No, no, it's so good. It's, it's important to have different, different types. And, um, last week, I think, well, I didn't talk about this last week, but I posted it somewhere. I can repost it, but, um, about a charcoal mask survey that that was a really good idea that, that is, I think it's to the October 1st EIQ 
people and I'll, and I'll send it out to you guys that I know Jessica's and, and I'm Washington is great, had great success where you just have a charcoal mask survey, like on a clipboard and you go out and say, hey, I'm doing a survey. Would you I'll be willing to help me out through survey? Like people are willing to do surveys. You're not handing out samples. You're not doing anything. You know, there you go. See a little tiny clipboard you carry in your purse. She did this this last week. Tell us, tell us what, what you did. She was carrying her purse and what did you, what did you, what, what, what would it look like? I went like this. I have it in my purse so they couldn't see it. Um, and I just complimented them on something, whether it was their shoes or their shirt or their scarf because it's been freezing or something. And then said, hey, can I ask you like a really quick question? I know it's kind of weird, but I'm trying to get people's opinions on the ingredient activated charcoal. Um, and then I've had people that were like, oh, I have no idea what that is. I'm like, oh, great. That'll be perfect for my survey. It's just a couple questions. Do you mind? And then I hand them. This is weird. I don't hand it this high, but that's when I hand it to them. <laughs> it's like, just to say, that'll be great. So do you mind just answering a couple of quick questions? And I just tell them because they're all yes and no questions. I'm like, it's really easy. They're just yes or no. It's a couple. And just hand it to them and they take it and they fill it out. And it has their name and their phone number. And it asks them questions like, um, one of the big ones is the last one is, have you ever tried Mary Kay before? If they circle yes, I say, oh my gosh, awesome. Who's your consultant? And a lot of times they say, oh no, I just tried it. I don't have a consultant. So then I cross it off and circle no, because yeah. if I see yes on there, I'm not going to call them because they have a consultant. So, but it opens up that door and that conversation. And then, um, you can get them to try the charcoal mask mm -hmm. to get their opinion. So I got... Yeah. 21 names last week in a total of two hours. What did I say? Two and a half hours? Something, something like that. that. Yeah. It was like 20, 21 <coughs> or 23 or something like that in two and a half hours, and only one of them had a consultant. Yeah. Do you get them a sample or do you invite nope. them? Nope. Nope. You're just getting a um, survey. Actually, when I booked them, I told them when I, what did I tell them when I booked them? This is a great booking thing. Let me just figure out what I told them. Hold mm -hmm. on. Yeah. <laughs> you keep talking. Yeah. Well, so just have lots of different leads, okay? So th there's always lots of different ways um, to meet people, but the key is you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, okay? I see people put all their eggs in one basket. Oh, I put a facial box out. Good luck. Like, it, that, yeah. you don't want to hold your breath. I'm, I'm telling you, they're not the best way. But I've also done booths, and they're awesome, and I've done some booths, and they're horrible. Uh -huh. Like, you just have to – you do enough numbers, and sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not. Like, it is what it is, okay? Um, and so that's why you just got to be doing enough numbers. Okay, so that's the first booking, do and don't, is have a lot – the do is have a lot of leads to work with. The don't is put all your eggs in one basket. Um the other huge thing with booking, you put a big stop in this one, is you've got to be excited. you got to be enthusiastic. Like we said, you know, before with, with booking, you know, it's an attitude that if you get on the phone saying, hey, like I remember Gloria being like, hey, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Do you want to get a facial? No. <laughs> like, like, like so negative. Like just like, like Eeyore, like we talked about last week. Don't be an Eeyore. Even if you are naturally an Eeyore, like I used to be, be a tigger when you get on the phone, okay? <laughs> and, and I heard a saying a long time ago that it's taken me a long way. It's fake it till you make it, okay? I remember before I'd get on my booking calls, I'd say, I'm a fucking fool, I'm whatever. And I'd, I'd, I'd jump up, I'd... <laughs> I, I would jump up and, and like clap my hands and be like, I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. Like this little kid, it was crazy. And I'll do it to myself. Like no one would see me do this, but it was little <laughs> things like that that would get me excited. So when I got on the phone, my energy was up. My endorphins were up. Does that make sense? Run up and down the stairs, whatever you got to do to get your endorphins going so that you get excited. Does that make sense? If you're not naturally excitable, no one believes me now, but I was not naturally excitable, but I, I have learned how, how to, to keep my motivation level high. So when you're excited, okay, you guys, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten off the phone with someone because <laughs> it's happened a few times where people have signed up um, and then in the training, they told me this, um, where they're like, when I was on the phone with you, I don't even know what you said, but you were excited and I wanted to do whatever you were doing because it sounded <laughs> fun. <laughs> that, that because so much of communication is your excitement, your passion, your, um, your energy level, not in what you're actually saying. I'm gonna give you scripts today, but this really doesn't matter. The key is your excitement because I've the, these scripts. Yes, it's important to kind of have an outline and that's going to be one of the do's is kind of have an outline of what you're going to say. So you don't trip all over your words. Um, but you also don't want to get so obsessed with the, saying the right words that you miss the excitement piece because you've got to share from your heart. Just that that's why it made a big difference last night, Rebecca, is that you shared from your heart. You got to share from your heart and not just share a script. Okay. So be excited.
Do you have that pulled up you want to share real quick? I do. I just saved it. It's cool. You can finish and then we're what, talking about yeah. scripts. So you can share it. All right. Well, why not? Why don't you? Uh, why don't you send that to me and then I'll I'll email it out or post it out or do something with it. So we all can have it. Um, so we know. How so you those know. are the do's and don'ts. Oh, okay. The <laughs> the other the other do's and don'ts. There there's two more. Is um uh that this is important. Set yourself up for a yes, not setting yourself up for a no. Which means um setting yourself up for a no would sound like this is what you don't want to do. Um, do you think you might be interested? My calendar is wide open. What works for you? Um, I think you might enjoy a facial. It shouldn't make you break out. <laughs> Those are no's, okay? Like, you don't want to do that. You want to set yourself up for a yes. These are great. Th this is a great question. Write this down. This will help your business. Is there any reason why? And then dot, dot, dot. So let me show you how that, that works in your business. Is there any reason why we couldn't get together and you could uh, give me your opinion of the charcoal mask? Is there any reason why you couldn't listen to the marketing plan and give me your opinion? Is there any reason why you can take the trash out, honey? Um, <laughs> <laughs> kids too. Yes, yes, yes. Is there any reason why you can give me your name and number? But people are so in, um, inclined to say no, that actually if they say no to that answer, it's a yes. Does that make sense? Is there any reason why? I mean, if they say no, then they're actually saying yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that is a great, Mary Kay asked used to train on that statement that that would, that, that, that literally was um, a game changer for her. So write that down, start using it, you know, in your booking approach, when you're meeting people. Is there any reason why we couldn't get together? Is there any reason why you can help me with my 30 practice spaces? Is there any reason why you couldn't be a model for me in my portfolio? Okay. Um, other things with scripts is you always want to give them two options. You always want to give them two options. This is big too with booking. Um, and I say this in my new consultant booking training, but this is so huge is you have always got to give them two options, which means a lot of times people will say, um, Hey, let's get together. What's your schedule like? And then you're like stabbing at times like, Oh, does Saturday at 10 AM work? Uh, no, I got a soccer game. Oh, uh, does Wednesday at 1 PM work? No, I got this. Oh, uh, does Thursday at 2 PM work? No, I got this. And what happens is, is they end up giving up. And they say, oh, we're busy. We'll figure it out later. No, 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 no. You give them options based off your life and your schedule. In a little bit, we'll treat on the weekly um, plan sheet. And um, you've got to know when you're working and then just offer them times within the times that you're working. So those of you that work a full-time job, which I know several of you, you're not going to offer them daytime, right? Don't offer them daytime. You're going to say, okay, we need to find time that works best for both of us. So are evenings or weekends best for you? So I give them two options. So role play with me, Brianna. Are evenings or weekends best for you? Uh, it kind of depends. Usually weekends. Weekends? Okay. I work my business on Saturday. Would you prefer Saturday morning or afternoon? Um, probably morning-ish. Okay. I have a 10 or 11 o'clock. What would be work best for you? 10. So you see, nice. see how I'm, <laughs> I, I'm giving her two options at every point, but I'm in control of the conversation. Does that make sense? And if at any point she says, no, she can't do that, we go back to what she previously said she could do and we find a time that works. But do you see you're in control of the conversation? I can't tell you how many consultants are like, oh, you know, what's your schedule like? And they're stabbing at their schedule. No, you run your life. That, that's another thing we'll talk about when we get to time management. Don't let other people run your life. You run your business. Okay, so you give them the options that work for your family and your life. You will drive yourself bonkers and you will totally get burned out if you're running around town trying to move your schedule around for everybody else. No, you need to know that if they, if they are and, um, worth working, and I'm, I don't want this to sound bad, but your time is valuable. And um, if they really want it, they will make the time. But what a lot of consultants do is they get so desperate of like, oh God, this one appointment, I'm going to run all over town and, you know, miss my kid's soccer game and miss this and miss this so I can have this one appointment with this one lady. And then you're frustrated. Okay. So no, you need to stick to the times that you said you're going to run your business and you just offer her those times. Okay. Got it. A little side note for you. You guys offer, you guys <coughs> offer a service for her. Mm -hmm. She's not like. I mean, like, I, like really understand that you're offering her a service for free. Okay. A facial at a salon. If, the, if she goes in to get a facial at a salon, it's going to cost her a minimum of a hundred bucks to use the types of products that we use minimum. Now, if you're demoing microderm as well, that you might as well just add another 50 on top of that. 
So now you're talking a minimum of 150 and you haven't even gone into custom color. Okay, your custom foundation matching her. You're giving her foundation primer. You're setting her up for the day. I don't understand these people that want to have an appointment at night. Like, dude, they walk out looking fabulous. Why would you not want to have your appointment at like 8 a.m.? Like, that sounds great. Yeah, make me look great for the whole day. But you guys, I used to be a cosmetologist and I did specialize in esteology and that kind of thing. And that's facials and stuff like that. And and makeup artistry. And you guys, I would charge people $200 to do their makeup, not to teach them how to do it, just to do it. I charged them $200 and it cost me 30 minutes to do her makeup, but I charged her $200. You're saving her that. Like you're offering her something. Like don't, don't think about I need to, I need her. No dude, she needs you. You're fabulous. Sorry, my horse. No, no, no. I think I, that, that that's huge. Is that you've got to you you've got to have that confidence. Okay, we're not wimpy Mary Kay ladies. We have an awesome, awesome option for them that they get to experience on America's best selling brand for free. Okay, so all right. So those are some things that I'm going to preface booking. Now I just sent you around some scripts. So those of you watching online, we're going to use this booking script. Um, and then I also have the, the 30 practice faces ones. You got to find what, what works for you and, um, you find, okay, you got it. I didn't have one. Sure? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I got it now. You got it. You got I'm it. Good. You got it. You got it. You I was going to wing it. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> well, a lot of what we do is wing too. And then I send her on this one too, the, um, how to book your 30 faces in 30 days. So if you have not, oh, oh <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. Hi, Courtney. You're allowed. It's all, right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. I'm sorry, I love the tutu outside. Oh, cute. That, and it's, yeah, okay, cute. Um, Next week we're going to close all the blinds. Right. <laughs> Pretty. I can see a tree in the background. There is tree, yeah. Okay, if you have not done your 30 faces, um, then you, you can utilize this script as well. You just kind of find it's a couple different options. There's a gazillion scripts out there, you guys. Um, so these these are just a couple different options for you. Um, you've got to find what works best for you. Okay, so um, Don't don't stress about the script. Just find something that, that you get excited about. Okay, so either or um, This is the the correct. Thank you the correct booking approach for power search So I'm just gonna read this really quickly. We are gonna do some role-playing. So be prepared All right, you be prepared to do some role-playing because this is really important that you get comfortable getting it coming out of your mouth Oh, one more thing I will say before we get into this is when, I, when I'm making booking calls, I, of course, a lot of people text these days, but I do like to actually call them because I prefer to actually talk to a human being on the phone. And yes, you can do a lot via text and Facebook, but I'm telling you, my holding ratio is way higher if I can actually have a conversation with them on the phone. And some people, it's just not going to happen. Um, they're busy or whatever. And some people, you know, did they, they, they just hate the phone. Um, but that's I'm telling you, you're going to get way, what'd you say? But that's the exception. Most right. people want to hear your voice because if you just send them right. a text message, like there are so many scams out there in the world right now that like I have had so many people, like when I physically call them, like, cause I, I call them and then I text them and then I try to call them again. And that second call, if they answer or whatever, or if they call me back because they got my voicemail, they're like, oh my gosh, I thought you were a scam, so I didn't answer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no, real I'm person. real. In yeah. the leads, I've actually had a person say, are you real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, you get that. Like, yeah, is this for real? <laughs> you eliminate that waste of time explaining mm -hmm. yourself by just calling them. Right. In the first place. Yeah. And we both have long distance numbers, and so that's always, you know, people that's are going, special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always joke, I'm like, I'm not a solicitor, I'm calling with good information. <laughs> like, you know, you make it fun, you make it fun. But I'm just saying, um, I want you to, oh, I want you to hear it come out of your own voice, okay? And I want you to hear it, and I want you to hear it. And I, you, that's where the excitement kicks in, okay? And then, yes, I do send a text afterwards with lots of emojis and lots of expl explanation points. <laughs> um, but I want them to hear my voice. And um, if they don't answer, I'll leave a, a voicemail. Really short and sweet voicemail. That's very important. I don't leave all this on a voicemail, okay? I leave a couple second voicemails, okay? Um, because I want them calling me back and I want them curious and so that they'll call me back, okay? So, all right, where are we gonna start? Let's see. What do you see. say in your text message, though? Okay, in my text message. So, 
okay, let's say it's a winner because I call, I love winners. That's my favorite. Um, I like working with winners is I will call them and say, hey, Brianna, this is Candace. You entered our drawing at the Chili Fest and you are my winner. Congrats. Give me a call. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell her what she won. I'll tell nothing. It's short. It's sweet. And then I send her a text saying, hey, Brianna, this is Candace. I just left you a voicemail, but you're my winner. Give me a call or whatever. When can you chat? That's what I like to ask them is when can you chat? Because I want to actually get on the phone with her for a couple seconds. Because, okay, it's very annoying because I, I check my voicemail. If you ever leave me a voicemail, I will check it. But so many humans out there do not check their voicemail. And so you leave this <laughs> message. I know y'all are guilty of it. Drive me bonkers. Um, but, but you, but, but, which by the way, I, okay, I'm going to get off on a little tangent on you. So this doesn't make anyone feel guilty. Number one, you are in business. Is your voicemail professional? And does it say something exciting about your business? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. If not, that's your homework assignment. You don't get any points because it's going to help you with your business. All right. Um, no, because seriously, it needs to be something that when, because when people call you back, I hate when I call somebody consultants and they have like this automated thing. I'm like, how are they going to know who you are? You know, how are they going to know who you are? So make sure your voicemail is excited and says something about Mary Kay. All right. Um, second is you guys, if you're not checking your voicemail, you own a business, you own a business. Like any business, um, you know, okay, so there's my little side, side note. I get Check orders on my mail. voicemail. Me so too. Me if, too, you too. Have, if, if you're doing what we're telling you to do on pay setters, you're going to get customers that are going to call you and be like, hey, I ran out of my cleanser, um, mm -hmm. blah, 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 just shoot me an invoice. Right. Yeah. Like it, it happens. Check Absolutely. your voicemail. It's awesome. So not to make anyone feel guilty. This is growing. Remember, we're all growing. We're all growing and getting better. This is that these, these are things you don't think about. You know, you own a business. If you called, like, okay, that is a good example. I called, um, I was, I was in Pennsylvania looking for someone to tailor my, uh, anyways, my dress for a seminar, long story. But anyways, I Googled some people and, um, cause I needed someone to do it quickly. And there were two out of the three people I called didn't have anything professional on their voicemail. And it didn't say anything about their business. I said, I'm not working with them. That the one lady that actually had something about her actual tailoring business on her voicemail, I knew I wanted to work with her and she was good. Does that make sense? So I'm telling you from a customer standpoint, um, because you'll get people that, that will call you from wherever. They may get your business card somewhere. And if you don't have a professional voicemail, they may think you have the wrong number. Okay. Side note. All right. So um, booking. Here's some, some, some scripts. Okay. So let's see. Where, where do we start? So if you're calling your, your 30 faces last week, or if you're, if you're new, um, I want you to make a list of everyone you know with skin. Um, I didn't say this last week because there's a lot of other ways to meet people, but a lot of you guys I don't think have really tapped into everybody that you know. I know you haven't. I know you haven't. Uh, yes. Um, I, I would challenge yourself to make a list of who is on your chicken list. Who are people that you have not actually talked to? Do you know that one of my friends, it was very interesting. On, on the top director trip, you learn so many different things from different people. And um, when I became really good friends with a lady named John Barton. And she's a um, first time million dollar director, went from, it was her first time on the trip, first time, whatever. Anyway, she had huge growth. And I was like, well, what do you do to, to meet people? And what do you do to, um, to, what do you teach your people to get out there and meet people? She says, I don't. Because most of them have the people in their circle and they're being chicken and not asking them for parties. And so I'm telling you, she built a million dollar unit, not teaching her people to go run around and get leads. She said, no, you really need to maximize the people that you know, because you need to maximize your acquaintances. You need to maximize the people in your life because you know people. You're just not asking them because you're prejudging and you're afraid. And I was like, oh, so that's straight from Don Barton, not for me, because I love y'all. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, seriously, most people have not tapped into everybody that they actually know. So that's little lesson number one. Is that, and, and, and here's the other thing, just because you asked them once and they didn't get back to you doesn't mean they're not interested. Five to 12 times. Okay, I'm gonna share some fun statistics. Um, we are gonna get to um, booking in a second, but I'm gonna share these statistics because I want you to write these down or I'll post them somewhere. Um, follow up is key. Um, I did email out 21 day scripts or whatever, um, and you guys can go that. I didn't print all off and we're not gonna go over it today. But the key to contact people is at least five times. When you contact someone five times, your booking ratio will skyrocket. I, I told you, I've had so many conversations with people that they're like, I tried somebody once and twice and I didn't hear back from them. And so I didn't think they were interested. You guys, how many times do you get a text and you don't respond? Like, they mean to respond and you just get busy. I don't ever do that, but I know a lot of people do. Um, but <laughs> no. I, I'm telling you, because I, I, I know this. My I own know. sister does this. I'm like, Maria. 
whatever. Yeah. It drives me bonkers. But anyways. Um, <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. But I'm just saying that what do we do? We make it about us. Oh, they're not interested. You guys, people are busy. This is our business. So of course, it's important to us. But people are busy that it's not their number one priority in life. Okay? So don't make it about you. You contact them at least five times. And if you don't hear from them after that, then maybe they... Um, then, then maybe they're, they're not interested. Your homework is to, and I will email this out. I just made this up. Um, <laughs> is there, th there's a, a video, uh, it's called the 21 day booking challenge. And I emailed out the scripts on it and it talks about going through this process of, and, and I emailed the whole scripts and I'll send them again about exactly what to say the five different times that you contact them. Okay. And having this, it's this whole huge long system of setting everything up. And some of you that overwhelm me, some of you get excited about that. It totally overwhelmed me, the system, but I like the scripts. Okay. Um, so that your homework is to watch that and to read through that because it's powerful. But here, here are some statistics for you. Do you know that 2% of sales and bookings happen on the first contact? 2%, 2% of sales and bookings happen on the very first contact. So those of you that just got maybe leads from Chili Fest or you went out and got honoring working women, you call them, and you don't hear back from them, well, good job, because only 2% of the people are actually going to get back to you. 2% of sales and bookings happen on the first contact. 3% only goes up. 1% happen on the second contact. 4% book with you on the third contact. 10% on the fourth contact. And get this, 81% of people get booked or the sales happen after their fifth contact or more. Does that blow anyone's mind? I got lost. <clears throat> uh, I get 2%. 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 10, 81. Just know that after five, you get 81% of people booking. Because so the whole point, you guys, is so many of you I know are like, I don't want to bug them. I don't want to be Mary Kay Stalker. I don't want I don't want to either. But there's also key in follow-up that you're doing your job and following up. Okay. Well, and the contact, you're not calling them like every hour or every no. day. I mean, you're calling like you know, I'm calling Candace because she's my winner from the Chili Fest, okay? And then she um, doesn't answer me, whatever. I called her, I left her a message, I text her, she doesn't answer me. That's two contacts, okay? I called her and I text her. That's two right there. And then, um, and then like, mm, that was, you know, Monday after the Chili Fest. And so then I call her on Wednesday because she lives in Pueblo and I have an appointment open in Pueblo on Thursday night. So I call her on Wednesday and I just say, Hey, I just want to make sure you got my message that you are my winner. Congratulations. Whatever the script says, follow the script. Um, like I said, I just wing it, uh, but follow the script. It way better results. Um, and, um, Sorry, she doesn't yeah, answer. Script, yeah. yeah. She doesn't answer. And so I text her again. I'm like, Hey, I just left you a message with some really good news. That's four. Okay. That's four. So now when I call her on Saturday, because here's my assumption, okay, this is again my assumption, call her on Monday, called her on Wednesday, she didn't answer, she didn't respond, because I text her both days too, she probably is busy during the week. Doesn't that make sense? Maybe she's, maybe she's target market, she's married, she has kids, she has sports, she has homework, she has a job, you know, maybe, maybe she has all these things, which makes her a great candidate, but then I try her on Saturday, and she answers. Weird. Crazy. Weird. <laughs> she she has more time. Because <laughs> I wasn't calling her when she was at work. I wasn't calling her when she's in the middle of making dinner. I wasn't calling her when she's getting kids ready for bed. Because now the kids are staying up later because it's Saturday. But like whatever the situation is, I've tried her during the week. I've tried her on the weekend. And that's that fifth contact puts it on the weekend. Does that make So you're not doing it every day. You're just trying to get hold of her for a week straight because – and the other thing that I'm sure it's in the scripts um, is to let them know, hey, I'm sure you're really busy right now and that's okay, um, but I'll try you in a couple weeks. That way really you're giving sure yourself the way out. You. Yeah. And if she really doesn't want it at that point, she's going to be like, you know what, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then you just take her off your list and you're like, oh, thank God I don't have to waste time calling her anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until someone says no, then you, 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 you can technically just keep calling them because you don't know. You know, you're giving them several, several ways out, you know, and I would much rather someone just tell me no, you know what I mean? Then, then, then I know to take them off my list. Okay. So, but, but I, yeah. I was one of the, I was one of the people that I literally just forgot. Okay. Like it took my consultant from September until about December to get me booked. And then because of how crazy busy my life was, I canceled, I no showed, I, I mean, you guys, I was the worst. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I was the girl that everybody complains about to me. Mm -hmm. I love when my consultants complain about it. Cause I'm like, she might I be did me. that. Uh -huh. She might be me. Who knows? <laughs> you might make a ton of money off her. Yeah. Um, but don't, don't give up because really what happened was I wanted to try it. Well, I didn't in the beginning, but later I wanted to try it. And I just, because she kept asking, it kept reminding me, oh, I do need, I need to make time for that. I need to make time for that. That sounds like I could try it. Or, and honestly, it wasn't really about the products. It was just about helping her. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to help her. Yeah. And I just kept forgetting, but I wanted to help her for real. And that's the thing with the people that you know, they want to help you. And they forget. Uh-huh. So remind them because you're cute. Yeah. And you're awesome. Everyone wants to work with you. I love um, that message. Uh, the unpretty message. Yeah, yes, I you guys it. all listen to that. that. That was hilarious. Anyways, um, okay. So, what well, one last statistic before we jump into actually, I want you role playing is: Do you know that forty eight percent of people give up after the first contact? So, forty eight percent of us in the room give up after their first contact. Oh, she's not interested. Oh, she didn't text me back. They give up. Twenty four percent give up after their second try. Twelve percent give up after the third try. Six percent on their fourth, and ten percent on their fifth. So basically, most people give up after the first contract. So don't worry about writing all down. The whole point is don't give up until they actually say no. Don't make it about you because that's usually what people do, Nathan. Most people are make it about them when it's not about them. Oh, can you shake it? Okay, so now we're going to get into scripts. So I'm saying that first of all, I gave you a homework assignment to follow the 21-day thing. It walks through exactly what to say each time you contact them. But we're just going to go over generic booking approaches. But the key is you've got to just speak from your heart and be excited and share your goal. I would recommend with these scripts, it talks about having a goal to do 30 faces. If you have not done 30 faces in 30 days, I would, I would encourage you to challenge yourself to do it because it's one of the best things you can do is to have that consistency. You guys, you're, I promise it's way more fun when you're doing that many faces. Then when you're just doing a couple faces, you know, you're not going to get it as big of results as when you're actually in front of that volume of people. Okay. So, we're going to start with this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay. So I'm going to role play with, with Miss Brianna. We're talking about my power start here. Okay. Candace is a new consultant. New consultant. Hey, I always say my goal is to do 30 days in 30 days, by the way. Um, I tell people that everywhere I go, I'm like, hey, my goal is to um, get the opinion of 30 people. I have 30 models, whatever. It's, I, I always, you have to have a goal and you have to have a reason to contact them and help out because women, like she just said, will do things to help you. So you've got to have a goal. Sure. You've got to have a goal. Even if it's not your goal, even if you do two phases in the month, I don't care. Because they want to help you, okay? That there's something about having a goal. Um, okay, so it's hard for me to follow scripts, but I'm going to try and be a good director. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just speak from my heart. I know, one. I'm like, okay. But I know that these help you guys. I just want you to know that you also don't want to get so wrapped up in the script that you're like, oh, I have to say it this way. No, no, no. You're all practice. No, no, no. Okay, you want to you read? Be, I'll okay, be the new you consultant. Can be the new you consultant. can be my customer. Okay. okay, where's the beginning of the script? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't read that Hey, part. this is Brianna calling. I am so excited. I couldn't wait to tell you. Do you have a quick minute? Sure. Great. So part of my training as a new Mary Kay consultant is to get 30 women's opinions on our latest products in the next 30 days. And honestly, you were one of the first people I thought of because, well, you're just like always so cute. So is there any reason why you couldn't help me out by letting me borrow your face and get your opinion of our products? Sure. Right. <laughs> Thanks. So what's better for you, nights or weekends? Nights. Good. I love nights. Would it be possible? Oh, wait. Um, great. I love nights. Okay. So um, would you rather come to my studio in the Springs or in Pueblo? Uh, springs. Springs. Perfect. So I have um, a couple openings on Monday, either at five or at six thirty. What's better for you? Not Monday. Not Monday. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm being difficult. She is. I was nice to her. Okay, Monday six thirty. Six thirty would be great. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Thanks, Candice. Would it be possible for you to possibly find like a couple extra friends, like you know your neighbor on each side or something? Because I'm really working on getting the thirty faces, and you know my husband's military, and I don't know thirty people. Not thirty people. Two. I maybe know one or two. Yeah, I could probably do that. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. It would really help me get my thirty faces, and I'm gonna give you like a little. If you bring like three or four, I'll even give you a present. What? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> so, um, what? I 
don't do that yet. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, do <laughs> Sweet. So I will see you Monday at 6.30. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, and then I always do this too. And I'll text you the address to my studio. Is that okay? Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Now, that was perfect. if Mondays, if she was like, Mondays don't work, then I would really say like, hey, can I, well then, you know what, honestly, I'm only at the studio on Mondays and Saturdays. Um, and Saturdays, it's in the morning, so we could either do Saturday morning, or I could come to you another time. What's better? Give her options that work for you, people. Give her options that mm -hmm. work for you. But doesn't the, I can come to you whenever, leaving it to wide open? No, 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 because I can, because I gave her two options. Saturday morning at the studio, because Mondays don't work for her. I gave her Saturday morning at the studio, or I can come to her. So she's telling me at that point if Saturday mornings work. So then she's like, oh, you know what? My kid has soccer on Saturday mornings. That's not going to work out. Okay, great. So then I could come to you on Tuesday or Wednesday. What's better for you? And, give, then go into and that then you option. go into that option. Yeah. Because ideally, for what I do to make the most best use of my time, ideally, I like to see people at the studio in our event times, um, unless I know they're having like a bigger party of mm -hmm. at least six people. Because that makes a better use of my time because I can book two parties of three at the studio at the same time. And really, when I say book two parties of three, I really book like four or five mm -hmm. and then two show up. Yep. Because we haven't gone over this yet, but in case you didn't know, that's only half of things that you book are going to hold. Only yeah. half. Yeah. That, that, that's just, it's a given. It's called life. Um, okay. So, so there's a couple things about booking. Um, I'll, I'll role play too with like, like what I do just so that you guys can kind of get like similar. Um, oh, okay. All right. Well then I'll book referrals. I'll, I'll book referrals. Okay. So when, when I call a referral, okay, well, I, I will tell you that the, these are from Pat Fortenberry and she's a, someone made $900,000 a year, but, um, in retirement, in retirement. Yeah. So, so they're maybe not exactly the verbiage that you use, but you got to find your own thing. Okay. Find your own thing. So if I'm calling referrals, um, I will say, okay. Da, da, da. Hi, Brianna. I don't think we've met, but, uh, Amy gave you your name and I have a favor to ask you. Uh, my name is Candace. She is helping. My name is, Cand okay. She is, um, <laughs> see, Amy is, helping, Amy is helping me with the Mary Kay project. I'm working on earning my uh, pink Cadillac with Mary Kay, and I have to do 30 free faces this month, free faces this month, and feature them in my pink professional portfolio to earn it. I'm running out of people I know, so I've resorted to calling and texting complete strangers. And she thought you might be adventurous enough to lend me your face and you give me, and you would get a free gift for helping me out. She really enjoyed her pampering session and wants to pass it on to you. Can you help me out? Um, yes or no? Great. I have a night and weekend appointment. Yes. I know, I know. Because I'm like, oh, I don't know. That just sounds weird. Okay, here's what I like to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, here's what I like to say. Basically, I usually say something like, hey, Brianna, this is Candace. You don't know me, but I know your friend Becky. Did she tell you I was going to be calling? No. No. Uh, well, they, they never do. They never do. They never yeah, do. They, they, they never do. When, they, when so, someone says yes, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. good. Because <laughs> remember, remember last week you told them to tell them, but yeah. They never do. But anyway, so, so no. that just kind of breaks the ice. Oh, yeah. she didn't tell you. Okay, well, I promise I'm not a crazy person. Get together with her. Her and I had such a great time. Um, in fact, I got to meet her dog and her daughter, and we had a great, great, great time. Um, that's important that you let her know you really do know Becky. So you throw out something about her. Does that make sense? And this is or yes, if you actually take a picture and send to them, it's so much better. Um, and that's why it's key to call them right away. Because right, if, you, right. if you did her facial two weeks ago and now you're trying to call her referrals no and you're matter. like, what does she look like again? Like, it's really key to do it right away. Yeah. Okay, so hey, this is Becky, or this is Candace, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Candace, you don't know me. But I'm from Becky. Did you tell you I was going to be calling? I know. No, oh my gosh, well, I'm sorry, I'm not a crazy person. You gave me your number, and I recently got together. We had so much fun. She wanted to give you a, she had a gift for you, and so she wanted to give you a facial and a makeover, and a $20 gift certificate, so I'm just calling to tell you about it. Do you have a quick second? I do. She think I'm ugly? I uh, no. <laughs> she thought you could use some pampering. I asked her to oh, pick the God. nicest people she knew that could use some pampering. Okay. So we'll get together. We'll do um, a facial and a makeover. You get a hand treatment, a lip treatment. It's a lot of fun. And then anything you use that day that you try, you get to be $20 of it totally free. So it's a ton Great. of fun. So I know. Super fun. Pampering like and stuff. free stuff. We don't like that. Right. So we just need to find a time that works best for both of us. So are you more available during the evenings or weekends? 
Um, honestly, both of those are pretty tough. Um, I can usually make weekends work, depending. Weekends work, okay. I have Friday night or Saturday. Which would be best for you? Uh, Friday night, my son has practice till 7. So if we did like an 8 o'clock, I could do that. Or depending on the Saturday, depends on if he has a game or not. So it would depend on which Saturday you're talking about. Okay, well, let's look at, I could do um, 8 p.m. this Friday. I'm gonna make it easy. I could do 8 p.m. This, this Friday. Now, um, all right, so got that down. The cool thing is that I can come to you or you can come to me. I have a studio in town um, or I can come to you. What would you prefer? Um, actually, at that point, it'd be way easier if you could come to my house. So okay, great. perfect. Um, let me get your address or why don't you just text me your address once we're done because that way I don't make a typo. And then the other really cool thing is you're, you're more than welcome to have up to five friends join you. Um, so ask around and see if anyone else wants to come because it's always super fun to do that with girlfriends, but only you get the gift certificate. And if you have um, three people there, I'll give you a gift. So oh. ask around and see if anyone can join you. Well, I'll see if someone just wants to come with me. After yeah, practice. it'll be fun. Pampering, done great. Okay. Awesome. I'll see you Friday night at eight. Perfect. Text me your address. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So the only thing that I do differently, honestly, that's about how all mine go too. The only thing I do differently is I actually get their address on the phone. Mm -hmm. So then when I yeah. text them afterwards, um, I text them what they told me to make sure that I have it right. Mm -hmm. Because then I'm like, hey, I'm super excited to see you Saturday or Friday at eight. Um, I wrote your address down as this. Is that correct? Yeah. And I would probably do that too. To be honest, I very rarely go to people's homes. I do Me most too. of my appointments at the studio. Like I would say probably 95% of my appointments I do at the studio. And so I usually do the same thing. I'll text them the address right, right away. Um, but I know some of you are in different places and so you may go to them, they may go to you. Um, whatever you offer, what works for you. Okay, right. once again, it's all based off of you, okay? But a couple key things, if you notice, first of all, I asked her for her time. That's important to say, hey, I have a gift for you. I have someone to talk to you about. Do you have a quick second? Very important. Because if you run into your whole spiel and she's in the middle of yelling at her kids or cooking dinner, like she's not going to be listening. Seriously, that's very important. Then you call her back and she says. The other thing is, if you notice when I, um, and I have my booking script on my website, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just find something that works for you. <laughs> but um, I probably should have printed those off. I, I was trying to peek at it and follow Pat's little thing. But anyways, um, it works for them. So obviously that it works you. for someone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the other key thing is that I said, um, so you want a facial and makeover, you got a facial and makeover, your gift certificate. We just need to find a time that works best for both of us, our evenings or weekends best. I didn't ask her if she was interested or not. That's the thing that I would say I did not like about this is she said, would you be willing to help me out? I'd scratch that out because then you're opening yourself up for a no, like we just said earlier that you do not want to do that. I don't ever ask them a yes or no question unless it involves booking. Um, so I don't ever, yeah. So basically if you notice, I said it went straight into awesome. Well, we just need to find a time that works best for both of us. Our blank or blanks better for you. You don't stop. If you hesitate, they hesitate. You go straight into booking them. Doesn't, Got that, it? Sound, doesn't that sound awesome? Cool. We just yeah. need to find a time that works best for both of us. So what's your schedule like blank or blank evenings, weekends, those of you that may be available during the day or if you would offer a daytimes or a weekends best or just give them two options. You always got to give them two options. Okay. Got it. And then, all right. So now it's time for you guys to actually role play. Uh, I want you to role play and you're kind of going to use this, but I want you also just speaking from your heart. Okay. So we're going to take about five minutes tops because there's a lot of other things that we want to jump into five minutes tops. And I want you to pick a buddy, pick a neighbor, pick a neighbor. Everyone got a neighbor, pick a neighbor, pick a neighbor, pick a neighbor. On two, 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 two. Perfect. We're matched up. Okay. So I want you to role play. Those of you watching online, I want you to actually have it come out of your mouth, mouth, and say them out loud. Okay. So you're going to kind of follow the script, but then like we said, you don't want to be reading word for word. You want to be speaking from your heart. So book somebody for your 30 practice faces and then book a referral because referrals are really the same as winners. Ready, set, go.
your mouth? <laughs> Just talk to so, people? So, Do you share even if you bluff her? It is. Like, even her and I were like, oh, we're taking <laughs> yeah. all of her. Yeah. Like, okay, so so hopefully, like, for all of our talking, hopefully you got that um, that there, there's several key pieces. Number one, you say, um, you know, do you have a quick minute? So regardless of what, what you do, say, hey, you know, hey, this is Candace. Do you have a quick minute? That's very important. And then you tell them why you're calling and whatever it may be. If it's for 30 practice spaces, you tell them, hey, I have a mutual. If they're a winner, if they're a referral, you say, hey, I have a gift for you. You know, you tell them what they want. I always like to say a premier pampering package, which includes a facial, a makeover, a hand treatment, a leaf lip treatment. And then I give them a gift certificate or give them something um, as well. So then I always joke and say, so you get lots of pampering and then some free stuff. So we need to find time that works best for both of us. And it goes straight into booking. Okay, so it's not necessarily the actual words you say. Th those are the key pieces. You ask them for their time, it goes straight into booking. Give them two options. You're excited. And if you're excited, they're going to be excited. Okay? So, yes, the scripts kind of help, but they also can trip people up. So you got to find the balance. Okay? And you also got to find what you share from your heart, too. That's really important. You okay? Read, you can read the scripts. What I did when I started is I read the scripts in the mirror like five times before I actually did it. Because when you read it five times in a row, then you're going to start to say what you want to say. And it's going to be your own words because it it is a little, when you're starting out and it's you're calling your friends and family, they know you. So if you start talking like Pat Fortenberry, they're going to be like, Mary Kay makes you be someone you're not. So read them ahead of time. Like it's really, really important to practice because then it does come just out of your mouth. Like that's why Candace and I were having such a hard time reading the script is because we've been doing it for so long that we know what we're doing. And, uh, and we know we've changed, you know, from the 20 different scripts we've read, we've changed it to be our words because we don't want you to be little robots, but we do want you to have the key pieces to it. And I don't know why I was just telling Brianna, I don't know why I print off this script and just print off my own on my website. I don't know. I just got to go. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> go, print uh, the ones go print off. I'll email it out too. It's fine. I don't know why I didn't do that. So, anyways, sorry about that. Um, anyways, so the key is that you actually call them. And then I always text them afterwards. And then um, and then you call them multiple times. Watch the 21 day thing. It'll go through like what, what exactly to say. It's really good too. A um, couple other things about booking. One of the best. The ways to book book um, appointments is booking parties from parties. Okay, so I want us to role play that really quickly because I believe that most of my consultants, myself included, are not booking parties from parties. And Mary Kay Ash, the way that she developed her entire company was booking parties from parties. And if you actually book parties, if every party go to you book one or two um, parties from that, then you're not then, then you're gonna have ongoing business. You're not gonna have to be running around town getting as many leads. Okay. So you really want to master booking parties right next week. We're gonna go over the full party and how to do all of that. But the key is that you've got to be intentional about booking the parties from the parties and not leaving without that appointment on your book. Okay. Um, and booking them right there. So we're gonna go over more of that next week. But just know that that is a huge piece of this, okay? Is getting really good at booking parties from parties. And um and what we'll talk about more, more through it next week. You're looking at over there, okay. But one other thing, okay. Now, what, one thing that I do want you to be thinking about though, that this next week, before we get into next week, we're gonna talk about how to do an actual party and booking parties from parties is, you need to come up with an awesome hostess plan that you're excited about, okay? Awesome hostess plan. You gotta be excited about it because next week, I'm gonna have you role play, booking the parties from the parties, and that starts with you having an awesome hostess plan. Okay, so I'm gonna give you and I'll email out some, some different options for hostess plans. Um, I, I, that there's so many different things out there, but it's an individual thing. I can't tell you, hey Nicole, do this hostess plan because it's gotta be based off where you're at. Some of you have inventory, some of you don't, some of you are new, some of you have been in for a while, some of you are more generous than other, some people are more stingy. Like, you gotta, I mean, not in a bad way, but I'm just saying that you're all at different places. You gotta do what, what makes sense to you. But the best advice I can give you about a hostess plan is it's got to be something you're excited about. If you're not excited about it and you're picking someone else's hostess plan, you're not going to book parties. You're not going to book parties. Think about for yourself. You know, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I am not a party person. I'm not an entertainer. I hate, like, I'm not an entertainer at my, my own personal house. Like, I'm just, that's weird for me. So for me to have a party, I have to really want to do it. So make sure that, you know, when, when you're offering a hostess plan, that it's something that you would get excited about, that you would book a party with you, 
Okay. So there's a lot of different options and I'll email you out a bunch of different stuff, but that is going to be your, your assignment for next week is booking parties. Parties is coming up with an awesome, 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 awesome hostess plan. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple different options. Um, there's a simple one that people use in Mary Kay, 75 for 35, where you get $75 of product for 35. I shared a few weeks ago at our meeting, um, the hostess offer was 80 for 40, which is a little bit simpler math, um, 80 for 40. But sometimes like the, the, this um, flyer, although it's really cute, could be very overwhelming to a lot of people. I think the other key thing about a hostess plan is it has to be simple. Simple, simple, simple. They have to know exactly how they can earn free product. Um, exactly how they can earn free product. Maybe, and, and I personally like to do things that they can control. Because I feel like, and you guys will have different schools of thoughts, once again, depending on where you're at in your business. Um, some people, you know, want to do their hostess plan based off of the percentage of the sales, which, yes, you can do that, but I also think that um, they can't control that either. You know what I mean? That that's your job to, to really master the sales. That, you know, a lot of, like, in my new consultant booking thing, I say, hey, if you have three people there, get an item at half off. That's a very simple thing that you're not losing much. Um, you're not giving much either though, but you're not losing much. Does that make sense? Cause you're, I mean, well, you're not losing anything. The bottom line, you're not losing anything. Right. So, you know, we are at different places in our business where I'll give away 50, hundred dollars, no problem. Because I, I know that if I can get in front of people, I have no problem selling products. Right now you guys may not be comfortable doing that. That's why I'm saying my hostess plan may be different than yours. Okay. So find a hostess plan that works for you. I'm going to email out all of these. Like I love my hostess offers. Um, I, I love. Yeah, good. Okay, and then I'll email it out. Here's another one that I mean that there's a lot of stuff out here like this, like a hundred for free when you party with me. And there's ten different or yeah, several different ways of things that they can earn, like ten dollars in free product if and getting your guest list for two days after scheduling appointments, ten dollars in free product for holding your appointment on the original day, blah blah blah. You guys can read. But um the whole point is that I want you to have a hostess plan because next week we're gonna talk about booking parties from parties, which is another huge piece of booking. Okay. All right, and then I passed this around because, okay, go ahead. Okay, One more thing that. about your hostess plan. Um, don't cater your hostess plan to your customer, okay? Like, don't prejudge her to be like, oh, she has a ton of friends, so I'm going to give her this because then you'll get confused. And I say this from personal experience. In the beginning of my business, I tried to find a hostess plan that was, like, perfect for each person that I was booking, and you just you pick one. And you pick the one that excites you because when you're excited about it, they'll get excited about it when you, and so don't try to do like, Oh, I think this person would like this one. And this person would like this. No, just mm -hmm. one, one yeah. hostess plan. That is your hostess plan. And that is what you stick with. Mm -hmm. That might get you excited. Good. Okay. So, um, we're going to go over this and this is pretty simple. Overcoming objections. So I am sure you have never had anybody give you any objections, right? Mm -hmm. Ever, 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 ever. No, I'm no. We, never we, we never no. get no. They never, never tell me no. No. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so, you know, the nice little booking scripts is nice and all. However, you will get objections and you have to be prepared for them. Now, um, now if you want to get really good at this, um, I know some people have like, um, put these on like little postcards, like three by five postcards and quiz themselves and just get really familiar with, you know, what, what are some of the most popular objections. So you guys can read these, but I think the big ones that I run across are I'm too busy. Um, I don't have any money. I'm allergic. I've heard that before. Um, I don't use money. Those are the big ones I hear. Those, what other ones do you hear? Um, I don't wear makeup. Oh, I got yeah. a new one. That was fun. What? I don't want, I don't like it when people touch my face. <laughs> perfect for those. you. Yeah. We, well, this we is don't perfect for you. No, no one's going to touch your face. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so with all of these, like I, um, like we, we don't have enough time to role play all of them because there's a lot of things that we want to go through. But I think the, the big thing is if someone tells them you they're busy. Oh, I this was, one. I'll check with my friends about their schedule. Oh yeah, we need to talk about that. We yeah. definitely need to talk about that. So we'll, we'll we'll get to that in a second. So the big ones are I'm busy. The the, the key that I think with busy is I always joke and say, oh my gosh, you could totally use some pampering. And I get it. Most of us as women are super duper duper busy. It only takes an hour. Most women, no matter how busy they are, they can find an hour. 
you know, that usually they're just maybe aren't as excited about it or you haven't, um, you know, convinced her that she really needs some pampering, you know? So if they're busy, say, oh my gosh, it's totally fine. It doesn't take much time and I can totally work around your schedule. And um, so what is your schedule typically like? Because even the busiest lady can find like 30, 45 minutes, an hour to pamper herself. And that's a great time. That's a great way too to just release her of saying, by saying something like, um, like, oh my gosh, I totally understand. My life is crazy busy too. You know, there's always like, oh my gosh, my son forgot his water bottle and he needs it. You know, that stuff happens, but let's just pencil it in at a time that you think would work for you. And if we have to change it, we can change it. Yeah. That's called the tentative booking approach. Very, very, very important. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump to that since, um, since she brought that up, oh, you know, a lot of times, no, no, it's fine. Since a lot of people uh, like that, the objection may be, Oh, well, yeah, I'd love to have some friends join me. Um, but let me ask them first and I'll get back to you. You guys ever heard that before? Like, Oh yeah, I'll have a party for you, but let me ask them first and then I'll get back to you. No, if you have her on the phone, you want to try and book her. And so you tentatively book her. So for example, so Brianna, let's, let's, let's role play. So, um, okay, so I would like, okay, uh, I don't know. So, um, so where are we at? Yes, what works better for you typically <laughs> evenings or weekends? I'm like, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, evenings. So. Okay, cool. So I actually have um, an opening. You could either come to my studio on Thursday or I could come to your house on Friday. What's better for you? Um, Friday. Friday, perfect. I thought you were going to tell me no. Um, I, <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me you were going to I was in the middle of booking parties. Anyway, so let's say you're, let's say you're at, at a closing. Let's say you're at a closing at a party, and you're booking the, the, the party with her and say, okay, at your follow-up appointment, you can have <laughs> you, you, you can have up to five friends join you, and I'll give you $100 for free if you have five people join you. So let's set up a time that works best for both of us. Um, so are evenings or weekends best for you? You know what, honestly, let me check with my friends and I'll get back to you. And I can I can just text you what works. Awesome. So we can totally do that. But here's what I know is I am super busy and my schedule fills up really quickly. And I want to make sure to get you in it. And what I know about women is that we're never going to find a time that works for everybody. <laughs> Ever, I mean, most That's of us true. are all busy. If we try and find a time to match our schedule of you and me and, you know, five of your friends, it's hard to find time that actually works for everybody. So what I have found works best is let's find a time that works best for both of us. And then you ask them if they can come at that time. And if you really can't have anyone there, then we'll totally reschedule it. But let's just tentatively pencil you in in a date. And you can just ask them and see if that works. And if it doesn't work, no big deal. But I know that my schedule fills up really quickly. I want to make sure to have you in it. So are evenings or weekends best for you? Um, I think I'd probably have the best bet then on a Friday night. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about, then go straight into booking it. But that's huge, is that you like, because they're never going to find it, because what happens is you never book it. If she says she has to go ask her friends, you're never going to find a time that works for all her friends. But I say, you know what, I'm busy, you're busy, let's find time that just works for us. Because what I found is it's easier for you to ask your friends, hey, can you come this time, than say, hey, when works for you. And if she's really, yeah. really nervous about it, one of the things I've done is because we double book, right, because half hold, so we double, mm -hmm. triple, quadruple book, and I'll book her in two spots and say, why don't you ask your friends what's better then? That way you're on my schedule. When you figure out what's better for your friends, we'll just cancel the other one. Mm -hmm. That way you've got it booked. Okay. She's got a couple options to go with her friends at because then she's going to go, hey, Amy, I'm having a Mary Kay party. Would Friday be better or Saturday? Hey, Nicole, I'm having a Mary Kay party. Would Friday or Saturday be better? Now you're, <laughs> that goes into a whole nother thing, but now you're teaching her how to book. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be a really great consultant for you because after she sees you take money from her friends, mm -hmm. she's going to want to sign up. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. So tentatively booking, and that goes back to your confidence, right? Knowing that, um, that, that you have to just take it that, that extra step that, um, and that's something that you can only do on the phone. You can't have the tentative booking approach happen over text because they can't hear your emotion. Does that make right. sense? So that's something that needs to happen on the phone or in person where you're tentatively booking them. Oh my gosh, yeah. so you need to have your calendar. Oh my gosh, And your yes. calendar has to be full because if you open your calendar to schedule her follow-up appointment and you have like total whiteness on the page, she's gonna be like, I'll just text my friends and get back to you. Like she'll be like, you're not busy, yeah. what are you talking about? I can see it right there. And even if you're not busy like with Mary Kay stuff, like put in your whole, your whole life as a, you know what I mean? Well, that's really important that your, life, so really that your right. life goes, your life goes in there first. Like, yeah. you know, you have to get your kid to school. You have to get 
you know, your kid to whatever or whatever, like you, you have to do those things. So those things should be on your calendar so that she can see that you're scheduling your, your work around your life. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, Sorry. um, no, no. Okay. So a couple of, another objection that which we're not going to go, we're going to go over time management in a minute, but, or in a few, well, I don't know, a couple of weeks, but you guys, the key like, is that you have got to have, you got to plan, plan your time and put your, your, yourself as a priority. Okay. Don't let other people run your life. Okay. So I don't use makeup. That's really just informing people. Um, the big one that I hear a lot is, Oh, I'm allergic or I tried it once and I broke out. It breaks me out. So when someone off. asks you that <laughs> to wash it off, yes. Great, great question. Did you wash it off? Yeah. It breaks me out too. And I don't wash it off. Oh man. So when, when someone says that it's just about informing them and asking questions. Um, because here's what, what happens a lot of times we get, we go on the offensive, like, Oh no, 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 you shouldn't have been in the, no, no, no. And then right away their guard goes up. You ask questions. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Brianna, that happened. How long ago did you try it? Uh, like a couple weeks. A couple weeks ago. Okay. Don't say that. Cause nine times out of 10, oh. it's not, <laughs> you know, not yet. I was going to uh, say yeah. it broke me out. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. You say know, they're allergic. Like, when I was in high school, my mom used to use it and this, Crazy lady with big hair used to come over and bring her stuff. Oh my gosh, girl, we have got to get together. I gotta show the new Mary Kay. It's not just old ladies, my friend. We are cool and hip. <laughs> and our products have changed a ton. I used to actually not be able to use it before, and then they had changed the formulas, and I was able to use it. And so, actually, now 99% of people can use Mary Kay. It's about finding the right formula for you. And I'd love to get your opinion of it. You know, all we can do, you can just try a little tiny spot on your face. If you're not comfortable putting it all over your face, mm -hmm. um, but I'd love to just get your opinion of it and have you just check it out. Okay. Does that make sense? It's just informing her because most okay. people, if they, um, can you shut that honey all the way? Um, it doesn't shut all the way. Oh, it doesn't? No, it gets stuck. You can try it, try it. Cause it's, yeah. Anyways, but, uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure he's tried. Thank you. Just, just there. Oh, I've slammed it or maybe not. Okay, don't worry about it. There! Yeah. <laughs> it. Give it some attitude. Yeah! <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Cherise. Thank you. Okay, so objections. Just, weak. just know what to say. Be prepared for them. They will come. You got to just know what to say, okay? And every time someone has an objection, go back to your goal. For example, um, the, the, a lot of you, I hope your goal is to do 30 faces in 30 days and use that as your goal because people want to help you. So if they say, you know, I'm allergic, I broke out or I don't have money. A lot of times people say, oh, I'm broken. I don't have money. Great. You don't have to buy anything. You know, you and just informing them, you, you don't have to buy anything. It's totally training for me. However, I would love to get together and have you just be a face for me. Is there any way you can be, you know, is there any reason why you can be a face for me? Does that make sense? And so go back to your goal, you know, um, a lot of times when someone tells me they're allergic, I'll say, you know what? I just literally need the practice and the training. I would love to have you be a face for me. Even if you just want to use a tiny spot on your face or on the back of your hand, I'd love to have you just be a practice face for me so I can go through my script. Or I always tell them they can try it right here on the inside of their arm because that's where they do all allergy testing. And so that way, if, it, if they are truly allergic, which is like this many very people, few okay, people, very mm -hmm. few people are truly allergic. Um, and, um, They'll, they'll react here. They won't necessarily react on the back of their hand, but they'll react here. And so then if they don't react, you can be like, oh my gosh, look at that. The new formula doesn't make you allergic. That's so cool. And people are a lot less um, scared about having a hive here versus here. Because mm -hmm. I know for me, I, I wouldn't try anything right here. Like mm -hmm. can, after everything mm -hmm. I've been through this summer, whoo, no way. Not right there. I'll try it right here. <laughs> yeah. She has allergies. Okay, so objections, be prepared for them, okay? One other thing, um, so you guys can, can role play those. One other thing before um, I give you one of my favorite tools, the bubble sheet, um, oh, bubbles. the bubble sheet is pre-profiling and confirming. Okay, so you book her, you text her the date and when you're getting together with her, and then there isn't a script for this, but I can, I can text you mine, but it's very, very, very simple. So before, so like, so like today, I have um, some appointments today from, from Chili Fest. Um, I want to, want to confirm with them. And when you confirm with someone, you do not call them and say, Hey, I'm calling to see if you're, we're still on for tomorrow. Don't ever use the word confirm don't, either. No, no, don't ever say, um, yeah, I want to see if we're still on for tomorrow. I'm calling to confirm. No, 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 no. This, this is, this is how confirmation works is, 
um, confirmation, but I don't actually say it. Hey, Brianna, this is Candace. I'm so excited to see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I just want to make sure you saw the address and want to see if anyone's going to be joining you. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. My friend Susie's coming with me. Awesome. I can't wait to meet you and Susie. And you saw the address, right? Yes. Awesome. Now, I have a couple questions for you so I can be prepared to help you with your skin. So a couple questions. First of all, what type of skin do you have? Do you have normal to dry, common to oily? Oily. I hate that question. Uh, I think it's really oily. Really oily. Okay, I can help you because I got really oily skin. I probably could top you on that. And uh, we got great stuff for people with oily skin. So cool. And one other question. If you could change anything about your skin, what would you change? Um, I have like stupid amounts of blackheads. Oh, girl, we can help you with that too. We have this awesome product called Microdermabrasion, which I'll tell you tomorrow about it. Change my skin more than anything. I can't wait to show it to you. Awesome. Well, I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I'm going to work and talk about those black heads and we're going to help you with your oil. Thanks. See you in the morning. Yeah, but I don't have oily skin. I thought I did. So even though you're confirming with them, look at them when they come in. <laughs> like, can I just like, <laughs> yeah, they, look they, they, at they them. Like, they may not have oily skin. Like, I thought I had super oily skin, but I really just had a little bit of oil here. Like, that's all I had. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Let me get that look too. at your people. Mm -hmm. Use your eyeballs. Um, okay, so a couple things about <laughs> confirming, um, well, it's confirming, but not really, is you ask some questions, and you, you assume the yes. You assume you're still on. Sharice, I'm so excited to get together with you tomorrow. You don't, you don't give her an option now. Does that make sense? Because your excitement, once again, will be contagious. And so um, if it's over text, and my text is, you know, hey, I'm so looking forward to getting together with you tomorrow, um, Saturday at 10 a.m., do you still have the address, and will anyone be joining you? Explanation point, smiley faces everywhere, Okay. And then she will let me know. So that's the first question back. And then my second question is awesome. I have a couple questions about your skin. What type of skin do you have? And then if you could change anything about your skin, what would it be? Because then you're getting her excited about getting together with you. Because our job in this business is to help them, not to make them buy something they don't need. But you find out where her skincare needs are. So then when you get together with her, you remember, you write it down, you remember. So, you know, when I meet with her and I talk about microdermabrasion, I'm like, oh, Brianna, this is the product I was talking about that can help you with your microdermabrasion. You remember that stuff. Don't embarrass them. No. In the party. Like, don't embarrass them. and be like, Brianna, this is the one I was telling you about. It's so awesome. But don't be like, yeah. don't be like, Brianna, this is for your blackheads. Like, yeah. that's not nice. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, right there. Right there. Uh, this is what I ran into last night. I had four, well, and four appointments for this afternoon, but so I went to confirm yesterday. Two of which contacted me back to the, like try to call them today, or is that being pushy? No, what I do for that is I, because you have two that are holding and two that haven't answered, right? Well, two that came from one. Yeah. Oh. Me too. Okay, so that's, you know, half yeah, hold. Half. Um, in that case, since you're driving down there, I would call. I would call. call. Confirm. Um, but. I'll talk to you more after too. Okay. I have a proposition for you about that. Okay. Um, so what I would do in, in that instance is I would literally like text them <laughs> or call them yeah, beforehand. Yeah. Push, right. push, yeah. push. No, 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 just hold, hold on one minute, honey. Just, just hold on. We're finishing up. No, hold on, hold on, hold on one minute. Okay. Yeah. So Please what I would do in this. that <laughs> in that instance would be to simply um, say, hey, I'm super excited to see you today. I don't know if you got my message yesterday. I just want to make sure I have the right stuff for you. And and I would call because I wouldn't I live 35 minutes away from there. I wouldn't drive there if they haven't responded to me in two days. If they've responded, or if they haven't responded, I would, you know, make sure that somebody else is going to be there just in case. Um, but I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't drive down there for people who didn't answer. So, but I would make an effort and I would let them know in voicemail, like, hey, my studio in Pueblo is 30 minutes from my house. Like, I wouldn't say it like that. How would I say it? I would be like, hey, I'm just calling because I'm really excited to see you today. Um, I do want to let you know that my studio is 30 minutes away, and since I haven't heard from you, I'm not planning on driving down there. I I sent them I sent them a couple messages. So because I had try a few times, um, yeah. I I had I I'd like seven people booked for this afternoon as well, and in, in Pueblo and canceled. Only I've heard from three, 
And then the other three I haven't heard from. Um, so like I have a text scheduled to go out this morning, like, Hey, I just want to make sure you got my message. Are we, you know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing you today. Do you have the address? Blah, blah. Like sometimes, and, and I, well, I sent a second text I lied last night and I heard back from another one of them that I forgot to respond earlier. And so I would reach out to them a couple of times, but then if they don't answer, I usually don't go if they don't answer. Um, but you may leave a message like, hey, just wanting um, to confirm and letting them know that you're driving down there, you know, um, that I just want to, um, I don't know, just connect with you and um, let you know that if it doesn't work, that's fine. But I just need to know because I'm leaving my house. Or I'm not going to leave my house unless I hear from you. Right? And if, so it, if it were the other way around that you had like one that confirmed and two that didn't answer you, um, what I do is I just go and pretend that they're going to be there and then if they don't if they're not there by like a couple minutes after the appointment's supposed to start like if they're not there by like 203 204 i text them and i'm like hey i just want to make sure you're not lost trying to find the studio or like i want to make sure that you're not lost like something that, like that's that. nice like, thing about booking something that you though, care so. yeah. yeah all right um okay bubbles. so bubbles. the bubbles the bubbles the bubbles this only okay. works if you use it exactly correctly okay so this is very 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 spring and this is a great tool to help you with your business so i emailed it out to you guys this is an awesome tool because um <laughs> you guys are every time you see it now you're gonna be like bubbles! but Okay. Okay. And what, what, what we found, what, what I know about most consultants, it's not that they're not getting bookings. It's that they're not calling enough people. Once again, going back to the whole leads thing that this business, I love that it says down at the bottom, Mary Kay is magical or is not magical. It's mathematical. You have to call enough people to get the results. Okay. So what this is, is this helps you track your activity. It helps you track your activity. And so your challenge for the week is to fill out at least um, one bubble sheet that this week. I, uh, one should be nothing. Um, fill out at least one bubble sheet this week. So bubble sheets, uh, what we'll read it. Um, Want to see profit, um, 3000 to 10000 the next six months. Finish your best year ever. How far you have your biggest year ever. Then bubble sheets are for you. They're going to help you earn everything. You pick what you want to do. One sheet a week is going to be 56 contacts. Takes approximately 30 minutes to an hour in the entire week. Seriously, people, lame. Y'all should be able to be doing one sheet, right? 30 hours to 30 minutes to one hour a week. I'm sure y'all can find the time. Two a, sheets. A bubble sheet. You can do a bubble sheet. Yeah, like it can, like most of us who are working our business, people in DIQ and people running are doing bubble sheets like daily or a couple, one every two days or something because you're just contacting that many people, okay? One sheet a week is 56 contacts. Two sheets a week is 112 contacts. Three sheets a week is 168 contacts. What's best for you? Stick with it. You will win everything. Instructions. Make so there. There's these circles, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a slash. So up here it has a slash. You make a slash for every attempt to reach someone. It doesn't matter if they answer or not. You have a voicemail, um, but you just a slash for every attempt that you reach out to somebody. Okay. If they do answer, you um, you put an X. Okay. If they do answer, you do an X. If they say no, you move on. When they book, you fill in the circle. Okay? So when they book, you fill in the circle like this. And you count all face-to-face -face connections, including warm chatter. Texting a booking invitation counts as long as it isn't a mass text, but it goes to an individual. Okay? Facebook bookings counts only to if it's a personal message, because I hope I don't need to tell you guys this, that mass posting on Facebook does not work. Um, it does not work. You have to do individual stuff. Just putting on Facebook does not count. The average time to do a bubble sheet, 30 minutes. Da, da, da. Um, okay, so what you do, each sheet produces 10 yeses. That's on average. So if you make 56 attempts, that's a meter on here, right? You're on average going to get about 10 bookings on average or 10 yeses. Um, that doesn't mean if you don't have 10 yeses from one sheet that you're like, oh, this doesn't work. No, it's no. an average. That means right. your next sheet might have 20. You could have one whole sheet right. with all no's and then a sheet with 20 and then you find the average and that's 10. So don't yeah. give up. And I mean, you can go down with the numbers. Each sheet produces approximately $1,000 in sales in six months at 240 bookings. Lead salt, eight bases, 12 team members, six, five, blah, blah, blah. So you can see how this, the consistency is huge. But I will tell you that what I think is that what is very freeing about this is you have to know your numbers. You may not get 10, um, you may not get 10 for 56 leads. It also depends on 
where you're getting the leads. If you're just dealing with, you know, cold leads, you're not going to get near, you're going to have to do way more numbers than warm leads and people that you actually meet face to face. Okay. But you've got to know your numbers and know that this business is uh, mathematical, not magical, that you've got to be doing enough numbers to get the results that you want in your business. Does that make sense? So your, your goal for the week is to fill out at least one of these sheets, you guys. That takes 30 minutes, seriously. Not that complicated. Okay. Anything else worth the booking yes. sheet? Yes, yes. Let me see your bubble sheet. For bubble sheet. Yours is pretty. Hers is in color. She gave us you black and white. You can print off okay. them in color. So I want to see how <laughs> there's a name the by color. the bubble. You guys, like yeah. everybody look at your bubble sheet. Oh, yeah, there's a name that. by the bubble. Each lead gets one bubble. It's not one bubble each time you contact her. Mm. It's one bubble. Okay, because you can't call the same person 56 times and be like, oh, she didn't book 10 times in that 56 times. No, each lead gets one bubble. Okay, and that's why I said if you use it correctly. Okay, because I, I see this all the time where consultants are like, okay, I'm making 10 calls a day or I'm making 30 calls a day and they're calling the same people because... That's your, yeah, bless sorry. you. Um, <laughs> it is hard when you're like on a roll talking to sorry. another stop and say bless you. Um, <laughs> but we mean it. Um, it, it's just like, I can't stress to you enough how important that is. When I do bubble sheets, um, I literally will put their name and their phone number and I will go through, like, if I got 21 leads from that masking thing, I would write on the top here, charcoal mask survey. And then I would go through and write their names and their phone numbers. So then this is all I need with me when I'm making bookings. This is it. I don't need anything else because I don't need all those little masking surveys. I just need this because it has their names, their phone numbers, and then I'm not going to accidentally give her two bubbles because guess what? There are more people in the world than one person named Christina. Mm -hmm. There are. I know it's shocking, right? I know. Crazy. Um, so name, number, as soon as you get the lead, then the bubbles. The bubbles. So just call them. Got it? Simple, bubbles. simple, simple, simple. Okay. So we're going to end with, okay, there is one more thing. Sorry. I'm going to end with this. I want you guys to do the, the 100 notes again. Ugh. That's your challenge Yay! again for the week. It's 100 notes because now you, need to get them, now you need to get them in bookings. Okay, I saw some Uggs. Replace that thought. Yay, I get Yay. to get notes. I get notes. to get notes. I get to get because the nose leads to the yeses, you guys. And as you're getting so as you're getting through your bookings, because I want you making booking calls this week. Yeah, I want you um um you're gonna get notes. You're gonna get notes. Okay. <laughs> so the last thing I'm gonna I'm just gonna end with, I was like to end with um some some inspiration is that um Appointments will cancel. We already know this, that things are going to cancel. But that doesn't mean that you want to give up on them because I want to share um, a quick story. And Brianna is a, a great example of this too because she canceled. But um, old classes and your dreams come true. 22 years ago, a teacher in St. Paul, Minnesota held a skincare class that was postponed three times. So the class postponed three times. At that class, she met a shotgun shell packer who became a consultant. The shell packer also recruited a homemaker and mother of four who was a former nurse. That nurse touched the life of a former nurse classmate and she also joined Mary Kay. This nurse also met a poor mother of two who had to save for three weeks to buy her, her, star, her starter kit. All of those women went on to be national sales directors. You don't know these names, but they're big names in Mary Kay. Anita Garrett Rowe, Karen Strom, and Arlene Lenars, um, who was the number one national in the company. Anyways, in the end, that one skincare class had resulted in 21 national sales directors, all because one Mary Kay consultant who simply refused to allow the frustration of postponements and no's to get to her kept a class on her books that had been postponed three times. That consultant, her name was Holly Zick, is proof that your dreams do come true. Read this next time you get a postponement or cancellation because you made a very wise choice to use that time wisely. Keep your sitter and make the time you had allotted for work. My hat off to you today. We're not giving up, or don't get into frustration, because if you do, flaky people win. Uh, don't let flaky no, don't let flaky people win. And you guys, your, your dreams are connected to other people. If you have a dream or a goal, it involves getting out there and talking to other people. And I know that you guys are nervous and scared, and I'm telling you all these things, that the leads and the bookies, but you've got to get out there and talk to the people.
Talk to the people because your dreams are connected to them. And you guys, other people need what we have to offer. I think one of the biggest things you guys, you have to know in all of this is make it about her. Everything you have to do in this business has to be making it about her. Like I talked about last week, just in meeting people, how can you pamper them? How can you spoil them and make them feel great? And then when you're, when you're booking with someone, ah, how can I spoil you rotten and make you feel like a million bucks? So you've got to make it about her. And you guys, people out there need what we have to offer, but we got to get out of our house. We got to get out of our car. We got to get off Facebook and go talk to people face to face. Okay. So this week I want you going and being involved with people. Because your up, dreams are connected with people. Say that again. Get up, get cute, and get out. Yes. And what, what keeps you from reaching out to others? Is it your fear of rejection? Are you intimidated by them? I'm literally making you get rejection right now with this feel, this dealing with no, because it is, it is going to toughen you up to where those no's don't hurt you as much. Because right now you're making the no's about you. Those of you that said, oh, I have to get no's, it's because you're making it about you. It's me. You're making it about you. Make it about her. Make it about her, and I promise you're gonna get more yeses in the process, you guys. Um, I promise you too, because I took that challenge, and it mm -hmm. took me literally the entire week. Like I got my 100th no yesterday. I was so frustrated because I was working with people who were getting no's, and I was like, I want my day 300 points. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna get another 300 points by filling out the sheet this week. So we're starting over. Uh, whatever you did last week doesn't matter. Everyone gets a brand new sheet. You get 300 points when you fill out this no sheet. My, my phone's really shattered, but Terry said that this was a nice resistful. I've gotten a lot of no's. So it's her little comment. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, yes, I love that. I love that. I love that. Oh, You're three feet from gold. I'll, I'll send it out to people. It's so good. Basically, um, you have to keep going. That There's a yes right around the corner. I'll, I'll send that out. That's a really, really, really good picture. That you guys are like right there. But I also want you to know that, you know, um, I hate rejection. I don't love rejection. I'm not going to lie. But I also know that my dreams and my goals are so much bigger that I know that's part of the process. That if your goals and your dreams are like this, then that fear and that rejection is going to stop you. But if your goals and your dreams are so big and they drive you to get out of bed in the morning, then that fear of rejection doesn't stop you. So um, I want you to think about um, th th this next week. What, what I really want you to think about it, and um, I have to end it, girl, because we got we to gotta okay. get started. Um, so your homework is your, I want you to come up with a hostess plan, okay? I want you to watch your 21-day booking challenge. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do, but the other thing I want you to do, and I wanted to go into more of this and we didn't have time. I always feel like I'm running out of time is what is your dream? What is your vision for your life? Write these questions down. What do you want your life to look like three years from now? Your life, not your Mary Kay business, your life to look like three years from now, five years from now. Do you have direction? Do you have vision for your life? What is your dream? I want you to take the time to actually dream because so many women, they stop dreaming. And why is this important, you guys? Because that fuel and that dream and that vision is going to motivate you to make the booking calls and to ask the people when you're scared and you're nervous and to face rejection, you know, because it doesn't need as much if you have a dream and a vision. And most consultants don't have a dream. They're too scared to dream and they don't have direction. And so they're not working with the same passion and excitement and direction that they would if their dream and their vision was driving them every day to get out of bed. You guys, you can do amazing, miraculous things when your dream and your vision is huge. I was just talking to, to Don Barton, the, the lady I was just telling you about, that her unit, they, they did huge, crazy things. And um, like the, the last few months of the seminar year. And the reason why is because her dream and her vision was her daughter, her daughter, her sister had died from cancer. And she had promised her sister that she would do million. That that drove her, that it was literally illogical, the, the numbers that came in and the new people and the production that came in because her vision and her dream and her desire to make her sister proud drove her more than anything. That you have to have, and, and that's why she was like, I can't even logically describe it because I was so passionate about my goal about be, about doing million because I didn't want to let my sister down. That when your passion is that high, it doesn't matter who tells you no, that it doesn't matter because you are so passionate about what you, where you're going, where you're headed. So I want you to take some time. The biggest challenge or your biggest goal this next week is to figure out, is take some time to dream. 
Take some time to dream and have a vision of where are you headed in your life? Because the point of Mary Kay is not to earn, you know, of course, free cars and money and all that stuff, but to have to help you pursue your dream in life. Have it be a vehicle to help you pursue your dream in life, whatever that may look like. But if you don't have dream, if you don't have vision, then you're just going to be going through the motions that all this booking stuff and all these lead stuff, it is not going to have purpose. That when you have vision, all the activity gets, gets purpose. Does that make sense? So that's your big challenge for this next week. And I want to know about it. That's how I know you've done it, is that you tell me about it. I want to know. I want to have a conversation. What is your dream? Why do you want to do this? What motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? If you don't know, then we need to talk. Okay? All right. So aren't you dreaming this week, but working as well. Um, all right. So make it a great week. Let's go get lots and lots of points, and let's go implement. Yes. All right, guys. Bye-bye.